Hello everybody, this is Cecil Harwell, and I've decided it's time to redo my videos with my new tablet. I've broken it in, gotten used to it, and uh, I'm working on the Tab S3, and we're just going to do a self-portrait. So, video quality should be better, audio I'm not so sure about, we'll see. But... I kind of just wanted to give everybody an introduction to what I'm about. There are obviously hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beginning art lessons online. And I just figured I would pitch in my two cents. And so the portrait then is my introduction to my drawing course. and. You can check out the other videos. There, I had some audio issues. It was like it wasn't syncing or something, and so I started over. Those are still up. You can check them out, but they will be taken down over the next few days, week or so. Um, basically, and this is just something you know. It's not going to hurt my feelings if you move on because I definitely have my own style and uh, way of kind of approaching art in the first place. So, first, uh, fair warning, I uh, hypnotized myself into drawing in the first place, so I'm kind of in this trance. And that's just to get my ego out of the way so that I can do <laughs> about the only thing I can do well. <laughs> so, uh, if I zone out or fade out or whatever, well, I'll, I'll be back around. It'll come back around. Um, because it really does take your undivided attention to be able to put this stuff down. And, well, anyway, I mean, I can work from a photo, but I would prefer not to. It's just a personal preference. I, uh, I prefer to draw from life, and so that's what these lessons will be. It'll be examples and how that whole process works. Let's see here. And I'm choosing a self-portrait as an introduction because what better way I uh, I'm not the most photogenic person in the world but uh, I do and plan on uh, you know accurate representation so this uh, will come together and it's uh, probably going to be like an hour, hour and a half drawing or whatever and so a, a, you know an immediate direct likeness should be the goal but when you're getting started you know that's not how that happens is not always apparent and so you know there if I were pretending and that's what I'm going to do I'm not going to erase anything I'm not going to paint over anything this is drawing so I'm using the I mean this is sketchbook which is free uh, now they've made it free I'm just using the, the pencil the first pencil in their uh, what do they call it the basic apps or basic tools or whatever now I've added some others like this fan brush and these blenders and airbrush and stuff and I keep my pencils here and but they have all these other great tools or whatever we're not even getting into that this is not a uh, you know feature exploration or any kind of you know app review uh, this is just a little drawing foray so to speak um, 
I want to challenge you to you know, go ahead and try a self-portrait, even if you've never drawn anything, you're just getting interested in drawing, or, you know, uh, the how-to, let's just see where you are, you know, so I encourage you to post, you know, any, any attempt at a self-portrait or whatever in the comments below, and I will do the same, there will also be a link to my Patreon page, and uh, a little bit, you know, deeper description of what it is I do or what I'm about or whatever you want to whatever you want to say here or whatever I want to say see here I am I'm even talking to myself <laughs> oops talking to myself when other people are listening as if they weren't there <laughs> so now, as you saw whenever in the beginning, I just kind of like went around, captured the general form or whatever, and then once I got the general correct, I've, I've zoomed in on some of the details, but I don't want to go in like here. I don't want to get this upward curl to my lip yet. Oh, I could use pointer indicators or whatever in the uh, DU recorder that I'm using to actually screen cast this, but uh, I prefer not to. It's discreet. So this little circle is all you're ever going to see whenever I'm pointing something out to you. Otherwise, it just makes a, a mark, right? So, uh, you want to stay as general as possible for as long as possible. Um, specifics I don't want to go in here and put more detail into the eyes until I've kind of treated the entire image, right? So now I want to see like where, okay, here's my sideburn, here's the outer edge of my forehead. My hair is a total wild mess. I'm losing it on the crown, so what little hair I have, I guess I keep, which is even weirder or whatever, but so what? I'm, I'm a weirdo. Welcome to the island of misfit toys. There's still this space up here. It comes up more like this. And then around like so. And then here there's So I have my uh, art apps. I made a little automate uh, function using the app automate. Um, it's called they're called flows. Um, so it automatically maximizes my screen brightness when I'm drawing. Okay, and this comes up around like so. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty close. So then where should be about right here. And the reason I decided I wanted to, I didn't want to cheat, I don't want to, I don't want to make this like a, you know, I could take like the select tool or whatever if, I, if something's too big or too small and uh, adjust it or whatever, or I could just erase completely and paint over or whatever, but my art teachers taught me, and it's great, I, and I abide by it, the eraser is not a corrective mechanism, it is a drawing tool. And so if you treat it as a corrective mechanism, then you're always going to be second-guessing yourself. And we don't want that. We, you know, we want to, we just want to move forward, constantly in motion. And it's that uh, motion, oh, my 
favorite, well, I say favorite, it's hard to pick favorite art teachers, but one I really learned the most from, uh, Robert Jessup uh, at the University of North Texas, always said, drawing is a dance. And so let it stay, let it stay a dance. And by doing that, then you kind of keep yourself in the flow. All right, lots of people talk about, you know, being in the flow, staying in the flow, becoming a creator. Well, whether you want to call it God or the intelligent quantum matrix or whatever name suits you, na just sheer nature for all I care, I personally believe that evolution is the very indication of intelligent design. So we're taking steps in this as we enter the flow of mimicking the creator, the great creator. And you see that anytime you take a you go you go people watching but instead of sitting there judging them like you're on some, you know, like celebrity talk show, you know, or whatever. Instead, you're uh, this. I like to call it urban zoology. Uh, so, a zoologist is the opposite of a biologist. A biologist takes an organism, separates it from it, separates it from its environment, whether that's a single cell. You know, even geneticists do that, or you know, behavioral psychologists. They, you know, they all like to work with rats and such. They take the animal out of its environment and they do all these things to it. They're looking for control, right? Uh, and so they, they find the variable that they want to identify or, or uh, you know, examine its behavior and then they, then they move on uh, with that organism, divorcing it from its environment. For, you know, <laughs> If some god reached down out of the sky and plucked you out of your environment, do you think you would behave naturally or normally in any way, shape, or form? So someone trying to identify the nature of, uh, of an organism's behavior is, is definitely not going to do it that way. So a zoologist then goes into the environment and does their best to remain undetected so they can observe the animal in a state of nature. And that way they actually get a, a sense of the animal's behavior. So urban zoology then, let's see, this is another what I've done here. Urban zoology then is uh, going into the public and attempting to remain as undetectable as possible. Down a little further. There we go, something like that. There we go. And make observational drawings of their research without being detected. You can tell whenever somebody's gonna or somebody feels you looking at them. And so there are several strategies that I've kind of employed to uh, avoid detection. Here, you know what? We're going to I said I wasn't going to cheat or anything, but I am going to move to another layer. <clears throat> so whenever you're putting shadows in, try to do it across an entire plane. Forget about the items or the features of your face or whatever, like your nose, your bridge or whatever, and just go for the shapes. 
That is one of the crucial elements in drawing in general. We'll get into that more. But one of the things that I really got from a college education in art was uh, to divorce yourself from any conception. Articulated image in your mind and break down the visual field by relating shapes to one another. So, drawing then, like to draw a person, or to draw a still life, or to draw a landscape, is not attempting to put all the elements of a city together, bro roads, bridges, skyscrapers, houses, trees, all those things, but rather just a relation of shapes to one another. And it's through that relation of shapes that one, uh, to one another that then an image emerges. Um, oops, it's going to come up again. Oh, no. I need to disable air command. I hate this whole way manufacturers lock down devices and say, well, you're voiding your warranty if you if you modify the operating system in any way. Well, that's not true. I bought the device. The device is mine. And true, right? It's not illegal to do, but companies will definitely try to invalidate your warranty. These devices now, this Tab S3 for example, has an e-fuse that trips. <clears throat> if you ever put any kind of custom, even a custom recovery, so you can make direct image backups of your own uh, you know, setup and everything, that's really the easiest way. I have yet to uh, factory reset this tablet just because it's doing fine, so what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I'd still like to be able to get, you know, Lineage OS on here. <clears throat> okay. So keep hitting this microphone over on the side. I'm sorry if it buzzes out or whatever whenever my hand goes over it. I think this is right. Yes. This is right. Like so. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so now we have let's get some of these sh shadows in here. Uh, the top here too. So see how I'm just crossing over from the eyelid or the top of the eye to the iris without making a break? It's because I don't want to. I don't. This isn't a coloring book, right? We're not. We're not trying to color in the lines. We're using, we're looking for shapes of gray, shapes of value, really. It could be cut, we could be doing this in color, you know. Okay, so, like, for example, here, this comes up like that. And it comes over like so. And then there's this one in the middle. It goes all the way up. Like so. <clears throat> and over. And then down and across. Let's 
about right. That's about right. Okay, so now we have layer two. All right, we've got the structure. Now we've kind of got, you know, a sense of the surface. Let's, oops, keep hitting that air command button. It's going to pop up here in a little bit. Anyway, so yeah, that's why I went off on the... Yeah, see, I just switched tools. I hate that. What tool am I even... Yeah, I've changed my color. I think I was just using like a gray somewhere here. Let's see. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. So... Uh, the reason I brought up the custom operating system or whatever is Samsung, like they did on the GS9, they put that stupid Bixby button on there and they made it to where you can't assign it to anything else, which is ridiculous. Of course then people make apps to you know circumvent that or whatever. Um, But why should I have to go get some third party, you know, something so that I can use the device the way I want to? Or then why are these, you know, one time there, you couldn't even do uh, screencasting on an Android device without rooting it. Um, those days are long over. I, there really isn't anything I need to root the tablet for. And I'm not, you know, such a avid. Oh yeah, see here like this. Let's get this shadow right. And it comes out across the face and connects right there. So some artists talk about this stage of the rough and then the and then the refinement or whatever. And I don't know, I personally don't like those well, this is actually going to go about right there so it's more like that like rough and then refined that's like a diamond and we all know about the illusion of the value of the diamond so well, you know, it's really a smooth, continuous process. Natural processes tend to be smooth, and although they can have abrupt moments of messiness, death and renewal in their in their operations, there's still this smooth continuity to the entire thing, and so you know. I like for the drawing to stay rough. You know, we're just gonna keep applying layers of gradations of sketchiness or whatever. You know, it's like, okay, so it's a sketch. You know, is there a difference between a sketch and a drawing? Is a sketch rough and a drawing refined? Well, that doesn't make sense. That sounds like, you know, some kind of critical application to something. Oh, okay. So, a refined image. Oh, well, everybody can tell what a refined image image is like a accurate representation or whatever or, or, there it goes see I knew I was gonna accidentally hit it one of these one of these times 
I don't even know if I know what I'm saying. I'm just kind of... I'm not trying to sit here and spew forth wisdom. <laughs> just a particular perspective. Okay. So something like that. Something like that. Oops. Something like that, maybe. <clears throat> and this whole... I have this here, too. It comes up... Um, let's see, I want to go back in here and start re, uh, re-establishing some spatial or shape relationships or whatever. So now I have, I mean, you might say that we've begun the refinement process, but I don't know, I just, I prefer things unedited, and, uh, I mean, you know, it's not for everybody, you know, if you want a set of clear step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw, that's not what you're going to get from me, uh, you know, I can lay out a bunch of practices, you know, things for you to practice, and then you can lay out your own steps. Because some people, like, I really like, you know, uh, gesture and cross contour and going back and forth between the two, kind of over and over and over, gesture, cross contour, gesture, cross contour, and then an image emerges from that process. But you may, you know, find something completely different that you enjoy, you know, some drawings can lose their that's what makes a life drawing is uh, that's another thing I learned in college a work of art is alive that's what makes gives it eternal value and so to keep a drawing or a painting alive is a uh, is a delicate balance or a haphazard birthing process you know it, for me it's a delicate process <laughs> I say that I guess but maybe not it's a, it's a lot of hammering hammering out ideas okay I think we're about where we want to be for another break. I'm breaking this up into smaller chunks so that I can take my dog out who's bugging me again. She wants to go outside again. Uh, which is why there was a break earlier in the drawing. Um, okay. So I will return. Okay. So where was I? Um, we went ahead and uh, adjusted our brush color here to a darker gray. Looks black in there, huh? But no, it's actually a darker gray. So, this is what we were drawing with, I believe. Just make sure, yeah. Actually, it might be significantly darker. It is. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and draw with that color then. And then we'll work our, or our shade, I guess I should say. And we'll work our way down. So, here we are with layer three now. So if we were to look at these, there is our initial kind of setup foundation, and here is our shading. And now we're just going to keep on going. There's not anything on this one yet. So now I want to want to redraw again. Go in here.
so we kind of have a sense of where we're going. Uh, by the way, while I'm drawing, I'm actually only glancing at my work as I go around with this contour, kind of like a blind contour, semi-blind. Here we have these brow lines, something like that. Okay, so then the glasses actually break the. So if we have here the brow, and here the line for the glasses. Okay, then the glasses refract the light in here. So where this comes in, this actually breaks and comes back out right there. So, all right. So this is actually a continuous line, right? But it's being refracted by the uh, the glasses. This comes down right at the break of the and this actually comes over more like so and up down around and here's our other see yeah so see how this matches up right here this is where I started and now I've gone all the way around so what I've done is kind of define like a if you could imagine a topographical map so then this I started here just glanced up here glanced again up here glanced up here here can you even see that let me make sure so this is where I'm talking about and I continued on down, made this come around, and then recorded this break. And then I came into the jawline here. This went from contour to cross contour, right? Started going through right here, and then down here. So there's this space now that I can use this to compare shapes. So that's actually a better representation. Okay, so. We have that, so then here's our, actually comes about right here, okay, so then here's our neck, it goes into the shirt, shirt comes out like so, collar, and across, Okay, I like that. So see, uh, you're constantly reforming this process, right? So you'll always have doubts as you're drawing. You're like, oh, this doesn't look like the person. I'm, I'm missing the likeness here. But the fact is, you just keep going because if you're, as you get practice, it's not so much training as practice. All right, so this comes actually right there and then up about right there and then this has to come up very quickly about right there and then down This is why I say get it, get out of the habit of second guessing yourself because you're always going to be your own worst critic. Always. That's just just accept that fact, and that humility actually is good in some ways. You know, as you're as you're stopping and you know, kind of over looking over everything, going, hmm, what is going on here or whatever. Well, that's that's where that process is is handy because you don't want to be like oh well you know I'm a I'm a genius I'm a master you know painter or whatever like let other people decide that for you um, 
uh, you know, let history be the judge. Because it most certainly will. <laughs> However you, uh, However you live your life, we're all saints and sinners. So this comes in here. This goes around. This comes up here. Here, let's, let's try to see this shape. Right, there's this whole shape right here. And then, so my lips are a little. Thinner. <laughs> and maybe I'm trying to make them. So you'll find yourself going, trying to correct things about you. Don't do it. It's not. Uh, it's almost like. Photoshopping yourself. Well, what then? What's the? You're destroying the representation if you're idealizing the the form. And uh, that idealization is like a denial of what's present. This is why I like to do self-portraits, actually, because it allows me to confront me as myself. And, you know... People don't ever really... People are always impressed by artwork. See, that's the thing. If you have any natural talent whatsoever, people are always going to be impressed with what you do. And you're always going to see all the mistakes because you're used to it. You have to live with yourself. Uh, you know... So you're, you're kind of there watching it happen. And other people aren't. You know, they only see the end product. So, you know, don't give yourself too much of a hard time. Again, especially, like, because people will see your artwork and they'll be like, wow, that's great. And then you'll be like, meh, uh, I don't know, I messed up here and here and here. Well, okay, that's fine. Then take somewhere in between. Like, if someone says, you know, this is really fantastic and you're like, oh, well, it's not all that. Well, then compromise and be like, okay, you know what, this isn't that bad. At least inside your head. And don't ever argue with a with an admirer. <laughs> it's really it really is almost like a fishing for more compliments or something. You know how people are like, "Oh my God, I'm fat," or you know, does this does this dress make me look fat? Uh, well, okay, obviously you're not fat, so why oh, why are you asking me? I always hate it whenever girls do that. Oh, this dress makes me look fat. Um, I mean, I understand, you know, how much pressure there is to be, you know, perfect or whatever in today's society, just the way ads are, and, you know, they hire, you know, these models that, you know, are some, like, specimens of beauty, but in whose eyes? It's that beauty in the eye of the beholder thing again. I do believe there is such a thing as absolute beauty, but it has nothing to do with current fashion trends or, you know, that's almost ridiculous. It's almost like it's the antithesis of, be of true beauty. Okay, and this is actually a lot smaller, it's more like that, I think. So... Yeah, that's better. I like that better. So see here, now this is why we use lighter lines. So instead of using an eraser, all I did was come in on this darker layer and, you know, just corrected that. So now the line underneath is still there, you know, right here. But, uh, good. You know, it's that construction, the construction lines add activity to your process. And that ultimately 
enhances the you know quality of the drawing. I think, you know, that's just me personally or whatever. Some people, you know, want to completely get rid of all construction lines. That's that refinement idea again. And if that's you, then go for it. You know, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to tell you you're not. You're not making art. Like I have my own theories on. I actually I call it the original. True art is the original act of creation. Then we the refinement process, or the you know the the attempting to replicate the act of creation is the ego attempting to lay claim to the act of the original act of creation perpetrated by the true divinity within us and you know it's a sad flailing attempt and it always always is and always will be so if there is anything like perfection it's in that original statement not in the not in the vain attempt to replicate the act of creation. I have two light sources here, so my shadows are both on one side and the other or my shadows really are more in the middle and then there's a light source on the other side of my face and like I said I have my tablet set to full brightness so it's a it's actually glinting off my glasses but it's there so we're gonna go with it okay I think this layer is probably done see here again this iris is too big so it's really more like that much better so see what's going on here is I'm just going over it and over it and over it and if you want to call that a process of refinement then you can I personally look at it more as like a continuous trial and error an evolution and so like you could say man is like the pinnacle of evolution on or here let me be let me be gender inclusive humanity is the pinnacle of evolution on earth the current pinnacle and look at how sloppy and messy and insane cacophonic it is and it's still there's this harmony incredible incredible harmony like we all are able to communicate around the globe you know we divide, uh, incredible you know invention of medicine we've been able to you know not cure HIV but keep it from killing people uh, our life expectancies have almost tripled in 150 years are well, certainly doubled. Antibiotics, refrigeration, etc., etc. All these amazing things. But we still have war, political strife, genocide. Okay, this is kind of doing something like that, and then on this side, see this is why you don't want to get into trying to create a nose or it's just best to just see what's there, make the shapes you see as opposed to trying to make an eye or a
or a nostril or whatever like here okay so see this whole thing right here is actually in shadow I wish I could remember who it was that said the only thing that truly makes an artist unique in this day and age is their style see this isn't even my style this is just I'm just hatching scratching on you know kind of on top of on top of scratches we're about to get as dark as we can too on here so what we'll do is switch over to another brush in the next segment and then I'm gonna put all these segments together so it's going to appear as one segment to you but I don't like editing that kind of stuff I may put a shortened version of this where it's all time-lapsed or whatever and then comment on it as it happens but I like to put the raw information up so that you can experience it as it happens say you whoever you are history whatever okay yeah I think that's good for now all right so we're back again it's been a few days I had to take a break for a commission whoops I like that that's my pen. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to change back to... I think we were just using the pencil, right? And then... That is the last shade, I guess, I believe we were using. So... It's, uh, and then this... That's about right. And then what I've done... You know, I'm going to take a moment and adjust the brush. So, that's one of the nice things about sketchbook. Let's see, where, there we go. Okay. What? No, advance. There we go. I think nib. Yeah, there it is. We want to include. Tilt. There we go. Scale with tilt. It's set to 400. Is that sufficient? Yeah, that's pretty decent. And then this is what we have. And then you angle the pencil and it's like that. So, yeah, I like that. Okay, so where were we? Let's go ahead and add another layer. Well, I don't know, I think I might want to come in here, there's a little bit more shading through here, and through here, through here, through here, so... This seems to come over more like this, all the way over here, and then again here it's doing the same thing. shadow of my glasses and then on this side it's doing that again this way so uh, I have this set to pen only mode so what's happening is whenever I just put one finger which I'm doing right now it doesn't do anything right but once I put two I can move it in and out or whatever. Um, 
so I can rest my finger, my pinky finger on the drawing, on the surface of the tablet without it messing up. And it is highly unfortunate, the whole notion of proprietary software. And I've always been, ever since I was introduced to Linux, I was, I've been a fan of proprietary or of open source material, which is another reason why I want to make these uh, videos available for free. Digital media should be accessible, information should be accessible by everyone. And I firmly believe that my analog work because it's one of a kind is you know has a higher value I guess and really I'd rather not charge for any of it but just rather be supported by you know someone who kind of believes in my cause and if I can pay off my student loans over the course of my lifetime so I'm not dying in the red and leaving a financial burden to the public and then I would die happy Okay, so this is really more like right here. For me, there comes a point where I mean, unless I'm doing, you know, something for someone, if I'm just, you know, practicing or whatever, then I get to this point, like, now, really. I've lost interest in uh, exact likeness. I just, you know, I want to, I want, kind of want to get this finished and, uh, and move on. So, I have some work, I'll post some links in the description uh, but at, some, at a certain point I just get to where I'm like okay well I'm just gonna finish this and I'm gonna make it look like somebody and not worry so much about trying to overcorrect myself um, that's something if you watch my other videos, uh, my drawing 101 course, you know, an exact likeness is not what we're going for. We're just learning technique or whatever. Uh, I would like to do, you know, kind of represent my entire, like, college training on my channel or whatever. And obviously, if you're going to go to school for art, then you're going to take art classes, and I'm not going to stop you. But maybe you don't. You wonder whether or not you're you have the skill for art classes or whatever. Will you know take you know watch my videos and and then maybe you'll have a you know gain some confidence or whatever and do it do it yourself. Uh, there's certainly an argument to be made for not going to college. <laughs> I mean, it really is just kind of a, you know, another, another way for people to make money, unfortunately. Um, what, why a piece of paper legitimizes your work whenever... 
So now I'm at the point where I want to go on to the final layer or whatever. So this is strange because it comes down like that really more. It's just this slight little triangle of light right there. That bends down and comes back up. Whoops. Keep hitting that button. And there it goes. Oh, you're late. You're way late. That was like, what, a second and a half, two second delay, three maybe even? From when I said oops to when that actually popped up. Okay. Oh, here, here, like, a, whenever I originally started this, I was uh, talking about uh, not cheating or whatever, that I wanted to you know, replicate replicate as closely as possible the you know, art making process. Well, what I meant by that was, well, about the drawing process, I wanted to I wanted it to be as close as possible to actual like drawing on paper or whatever. Well, I was thinking about it the other day, and what I'm gonna do. here in a second is going to change everything. Obviously you couldn't do this on a piece of paper with a drawing unless you were drawing on oh, what is it called? Vellum or uh, uh, celluloid or whatever, some kind of transparent medium. But, for example, okay, we're going to go to the layer. Here's our background. And let's just pick a gray. Oh, neat. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, so that's the gray that we're working on, right? So if we just pick a gray, like... So there's a... There's the color that we originally started out with. Let's just do something like so. Okay, so now we have a... Like a general shade, right? So we could go through here... And... Choose... A lighter gray. So now we can work in. We can work in lighter colors as well. But I'm going to do that on a different layer. There we go. <clears throat> so we can put in lights. A lot of people, this always reminds me of that uh, storyteller on PBS that would draw in like chalk on like blue or green or beige or whatever color paper, which was neat. But for some reason, work on gray has this quality about it that is really cool. That like, like brings this other dimension or whatever to a drawing. Which I like. Adding another dimension is always very cool. Uh, that's actually what I've kind of come to understand about color. Uh, each color, if you work just in primaries alone, then each color adds its own level of dimension. And I can partially justify that through, um, 
the fact that 60%, I need to be able to back all this stuff up. So, you know, don't quote me on this. I will try to find out where I actually read this. But 60% uh, of our depth perception is actually color comparison, which I thought was fascinating. Okay, so let's see here. There's this. And there's the fold of my eye, and then there's my actual eyeball. This comes on around. Like so. And then on the other side. And there's this nice little shading right there. And again here, it's on this side too. And now see, this is not really that light. glint right there another glint over here Across my brow, across my forehead. Like so, and then again, like so. And then this one also stretches across here. Again, we're just comparing shapes. I'm not thinking, oh, this is my forehead, this is my. I'm thinking, okay, here's this shape, and this is how this shape relates to this one. And this shape relates to this one over here, like for example right here, there's this big... So we're really just comparing values across the surface. Same thing goes here, this is actually more like that. And up. Up and down. This over here, barely. And this comes in like that. It connects this whole shape. And this is like a triangle that comes in like so. See, like earlier I said, oh, well, you know, I'm about, I'm ready to give up on a direct or an exact likeness. And all of a sudden, wow, here's this light color that's fixing all of that. Like, literally. So, this comes up around here. And this connects right there. There we go. I think that's closer. And this is lighter. Here. 
Dang it, I hit that button again. But we're not getting it. It's like if the pin is on the surface, then it doesn't trigger the air command. I hate how Samsung does that. I cannot disable air command without having this special app that of course wants to, you know, wants me to pay for it. <laughs> so annoying whenever a device you pay m multiple hundreds of dollars for turns around and tries to make you use it in a certain way. It's like that, like I said, with the S9 and the Bixby button. What a, what a train wreck. Bixby button. Make me use Bixby. Okay, let's see here. I think we're about ready to call the highlights done. And I kind of like to jump, uh, like whenever I'm doing color work, I like to jump back and forth between complementaries, opposites. And so with this, I'll go from dark. I like to start in the middle. Right, and then go and work out. So, um, now that we're, I think we're done with that. That looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and go. We're gonna put this underneath, but on top of everything else, underneath the highlights, but on top of everything else, we're gonna do a dark gray. No black, but dark gray. Okay, and we'll just just pick a place and start making your your shapes. For example, these glasses are not black, they're brown. So the darkest areas are only in certain spots. So you don't want to... Again, we're not making glasses, right? We're not drawing glasses, we're relating shapes to one another. Even across a... And at this point, I'm looking at the image a lot more than I'm looking in the mirror, just because we're, you know, getting towards the end, right? And I think I said earlier something about what my professor taught me about spending, and it's true, spending. spending less than five to eight percent tops actually looking at your work and spend 92 to 95 percent of your time studying your model and then looking back just glancing at your work
That sounds insane, but believe it or not, not only can it be done, but ultimately, whenever you get into more advanced work, it is essential. And for 80% of this drawing, that is exactly what I was doing. Looking mostly at my subject, which happens to be me in the mirror. <laughs> but now that I'm coming down towards the end, and that's almost where, like, that's where you jump. So if you try to spend that 95% of the time looking at your model in the beginning, then you have this extra 3% towards the end where you can really spend time. You know, earlier I was decrying the refinement or whatever, but you know there is a refinement going on, that's for sure. So, but, This is all still, we're all still in an original act of creation here. Let's see. That's gonna... See what I've done is I've hedged myself in to this. So what's wrong here? Because that's not right. Let's just back up a little. I might have hedged myself in. So one solution here, since we're doing this, yeah, we're going to move this up here. Come on, give it to me. There we go. We're just going to put that on top. That way, uh, again, we're, even though I'm cheating. Okay, so that is right. This comes more like that. And then down. And this is more right. So, in the spirit of relating shapes to one another, more like that. It still feels weird. So, what's going on there? This is still there. And that looks right. This over here is wrong. This is more like right here, which puts that right there. So whenever something looks wrong like this, but you're like checking it out and lining it up and, you know, really measuring, and it still looks wrong, well then look at everything around it, because that's usually where your mistake is, not in the... See, that looks much better. So just don't stop drawing. And don't get hung up on it. That's another reason why you don't use an eraser as a correction mechanism. You use it as a drawing tool. Because I'm going to let that stand. Now what may solve the problem is the outer part of my iris is actually much thicker. And it looks like this actually comes down over it. And then if I do the same thing over here, so this outer dark line of my iris is much thicker, and then this comes over it. And then this is darker through here. And then this is a lot darker through here. See, now that I've got that darker shade on there, I want to kind of work. Again, like I said, it's just that relationship of shapes to one another that ultimately 
cements the drawing. So here we have, and then here we have. And then this comes around like so. And then up. And then down. And then over. And this is much smaller than I made it. This kind of crease in my. And again, over here. Sorry, now I'm kind of deep in hypnosis. <laughs> This is kind of where, you know, it really comes together, though. Right. Just don't ever, that's what I'm talking about, not giving up. Like, don't, don't stop and hang yourself up on one thing that doesn't look right. Just keep going. Because almost always, nine times out of ten, it's going to correct itself. And if you get hung up on it, then all of a sudden you've created this problem, this illusionary problem that actually isn't there. Like you're, the problem that you think you see only looks like a problem in context. And in a malaligned context where you're thinking it's one way, but in reality, you were, your intuition was right all along. And then you go trying to correct something out of context and you mess it up. Well, then, then you then you fulfill this prophecy that oh well that isn't what I thought it was or whatever. And then you go trying to overcorrect, and in the process of overcorrecting, you you doomed yourself, pinned yourself in to something that was actually correct in the first place, but because you were so busy second guessing yourself you wind up messing it up even more or messing up something that I say messing up something even more messing up something that wasn't messed up in the first place so you know, as I get closer to you know, finishing this you know I've kind of uh, There are several places where I've lost what you know I was trying to say or whatever because that hypnotic state I was talking about. But uh, really, this isn't meant to be instruction. This is just meant to be you getting to see my work, see how I work, kind of get a sense of my philosophy on the whole art making process. Just to you know, like I said in the beginning, getting to know each other. And so this is about done. I mean, really, just a few more places to kind of finish up, and then really, it is almost done. So I'm going to put, uh, stitch these videos together, put them up as is, and uh, post to Facebook, YouTube, etc, etc, because we are about finished. And part of me wants to...
there's some values, light and dark stuff that I want to, like, okay, for example, here, there's a, it's really a lot darker here than I've intimated in my original, All right, so, it's darker in here, like so, and then through here, it seems, there we go. Now see how something can just all of a sudden come together because you're like, okay, there's this big shape here that didn't get enough attention or whatever. This shape right here. Uh, yeah. And then here, there's another one like right here. It's a big one. So, you know, that was why I wanted to just go ahead and do this as if it were on paper so that you could see, like, you know, I didn't erase anything. I made two adjustments to the background color and then I flipped two layers or whatever, which would be impossible, obviously, you know, if this were on paper. But the principle remains. Uh, you know, that you can, even if I were working in chalk or whatever, you could still you could make all of these marks on paper is all I'm really getting at at this point <laughs> like a, there's not there's nothing hidden uh, there's no secret you know oh well oh I don't have you know a tablet to draw on or whatever well you don't need one you can you know put this up on your laptop or your desktop or whatever and draw on a napkin and that's kind of the whole point of my why I'm doing, you know, out of hundreds of, you know, drawing videos or whatever, why am I doing, you know, my own? Well, because I just want to encourage people who may be coming up with excuses not to. There are no excuses. If you want to make art, you should do it. We do not have enough. Human experience is extremely complex and uh, rich, multidimensional, and we need as many sophisticated expressors as possible. Uh, so that was really my purpose for wanting to do an online drawing course. It's not really, you know, not just to teach you how to draw, but to inspire you to follow your dreams because there aren't enough people doing that these days and there need to be more and big fat happy corporations are more than willing to discourage free creative and open expression uh, yet another reason why I don't want to make these videos about whether or not you can afford it of course far be it from me to stop you from supporting my patreon page <laughs> okay I think we are good I like this I like where this finished up so this is it I think for my new introduction thank you for taking the time to watch I'll say all this as I continue drawing the, you are, like I said, you're always going to be your own worst critic, and you know, do not, do not let your own perfectionism get in the way of you making art. Uh, so just a few more spots here. You can always go further, you know, but there is also this point where something is overworked, and you don't want to kill. You don't want to kill the drawing, because if you kill the drawing, it, it, it is no longer a work of art. And, just off the top of my head, I believe that we have reached that point. Okay, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and please leave any questions or comments you have below, and I'm happy to answer them.
uh, have a great week and uh, drawing 101 will be updated or drawing 101 lesson 1 will be updated within the next 7 days uh, alrighty that's it we're done we're calling it finished. Uh, thank you and have a great week. See you next time.